Hey guys, today we're gonna to be putting together this power sleeve for this mean well power supply. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So this is modeled off of the Meanwell LRS 200 power supply. Um, this is pretty much pulled from what I saw Nero using and I kind of just wanted to create the same thing. And there's a bunch of options out there. I just didn't see anything that fit exactly what I wanted. So uh, a couple of the design goals I had in mind were that I wanted this to be a, a flush seamless fit along the side. So it's actually kind of got a, a snap in retention system rather than being uh, fixed by some screws. So it's not as spacious, uh, but I also wanted to just be able to lay flush on a desk and not have it be raised or lowered in any way. Um, so there's just a little bit of room. It's kind of a cutaway. And this is actually a slightly old image where we had a, uh, a little lip right here, but it turns out that the Meanwell CAD file was different than what I actually got. So modified the file and it, I think it's going to work just fine, but it'll have room for a standard, um, let's see here. We're going to be using a uh, C14 style plug with switch and fuse. And then we've got some flush mount XT60 connectors. Um, there are some of these that are completely flush mount in the sense that there's nothing exposed on the surface, but it requires a clamshell style. You know, you, you print the first half, you put these in there, you print the other half, and then they it kind of encapsulates it, which I think that's a nice clean look, but just for simplicity and serviceability and rigidity, I kind of wanted this to be one whole piece. And then these are actually going to be bolted in place. So I'll feel a little bit better about that. But um, yeah, so the whole idea here is just to have a couple of these XT60 connectors. You know, I'll be able to run the TS100 soldering iron off of it. I want to have a little fume, a little fume fan. Uh, not an extractor, but something just to kind of blow it out of your way. And uh, yeah, that's that's our goal. So let's get right into it here. I think first, just kind of figuring out how long we want to have. Just enough room to be able to service this and get it apart, but not so much so that there's this rat's nest of wiring in there. So I think if we go right about there. Smidge just a little bit off of that. So we'll just do three of those. This is another one of those projects that was kind of a solution to something that didn't need to be solved. But uh, since I'm building that Voron and I decided to use the UHP power supplies, I knew I was going to have this guy laying around unused. So it seemed like the perfect time to jump right in and have that be that. Probably do a little bit more for the connector side. The side that we solder to the XT will be pretty clean and flush there. Yeah, actually, I was pretty surprised just with, uh, I started designing this before the power supply actually got to me. That's why I was using 
their mean well supplied CAD files rather than actually taking measurements off the device. And I think I had, Oh, so that's the fifth revision. The first one was actually, a, uh, I messed up a pretty simple thing there. Three, or so yeah, two, three, four. And then the fifth one, I decided I needed to stop printing the whole thing. And it was a real nice fit. So fingers crossed. Probably shouldn't have said that. Sticky silicone wire. Not sticky, but it doesn't want to roll. Alright, and we'll pre tin these real quick. somebody's OCD. I'm also used to soldering much smaller wire. There we go. I need to stop wearing a hat while I do this because I know I keep blocking the Speed square is probably sucking the heat out of it just as fast as I'm pumping it in. Now that we're getting an idea of what we're doing, let's go redo this one.
far from a soldering expert. I know it's supposed to flow towards it once it gets hot. I think in a perfect world, I, I don't know. I also know that there's like, you're supposed to use flux, but this is like rosin core flow. I don't know. I'm sure someone out there could educate me real quick on the matter. Already lost one of those. There we go. Get out of there. Get out of there. Hardware optional. All right, and so on these guys, they are obviously um, polarity dependent. So the flat side is going to be positive, the rounded side is negative. And you can see that they are marked, and that's a pretty standard thing for the XT60s. I'm going to probably cheat and get the helper out real quick. You guys don't have to watch me shake for 20 minutes. Yeah, spend 20 minutes watching me get it set up. Work for what I need. One down. Just a couple more to go. I do gotta admit that like when you watch some of these guys that have been doing it for a while with this whole streaming thing or even just recording, oh, I remember when I, the first time I was like, oh, I'm gonna give it a shot and just some of the, my personal stuff, like I said, just so I can kind of keep track and remember it down the road. And I was like, yeah, I'll just fire up the webcam and bada bing, bada boom. And it's oh, silly me for thinking it was gonna be simple. So many little things to think about, like keeping your arms out of the way, keeping your head out of the way. Did you click record? Oh no, unsolder everything. Nothing. 
feels like it's it's kind of bunching up. Hmm. That one probably won't win many awards, but I think it's good. The other tricky part is that since I have no intention of editing any of this, trying to do it quick enough that it doesn't turn into a four hour cluster of me learning how to solder on some connectors. <laughs> I think we're good with the soldering iron for a minute, which probably means we'll need it in like two seconds. Slide you back here quick. Get rid of you. Bust out our super duper harbor freight heat gun real quick. Put these on before we forget. Easy peasy. All right. Now we can throw these connectors on real quick. There's probably a more correct way to do those, but I've always used the little nub 
to push one ear in and then push the other ear in and kind of, so kind of fold it rather than like a single motion crimp. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but I've made it to this point in my life with Let's see if you can Let's see what I mean. And then just kind of switch it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Actually, pull just a smidge more off this guy. Alright, so those guys are all done and ready to be wired up. Set them off to the side. Let's get this guy going. Uh, so one other quick thing on these is that you kind of look at this and you might think, you know, you've got power, or I'm sorry, load, neutral, ground, which is what it is. Uh, I know sometimes I can kind of think like ground being black but that's kind of the difference when you're working with mains and you're working with low volt. So if you're working with something that's 12 volt, 24 volt, stuff like that, typically you'll have red and black, power and ground. But once you work with mains, you've got low neutral ground. And so um, ground is not the same color scheme there. So make sure not to mix that up. There is, if you look at this, I know I'll try and see if I can't. We just suffer through this. Let's suffer through it again. Come on. Right there, so right there, you can see the N for neutral. Stay in focus. Right up here, there is a little E for earth. Come on. Yeah. And then L for load, but L for load goes through the little section down here that's actually for the fuse. So. Um, same thing with your plug. If you actually look real close at the end of the plug. There we go. You'll see the N, L, N ground symbol. They're, they're upside down right now, but you've got neutral right here, load, and then earth in the middle, which is ground. So just keep that in mind before you do something you regret. Same thing here, I think if we cut those. glue these handles back on.
pieces up. Save those for something else. So now we should be able to, and I want to have the switch be in the middle just for cleanliness reasons. That's a little chewed up, isn't it? Nice. Oh, yeah. Tuck some of those wires in there. Tuck those ones in there. Bring these guys back over. So far, so good. A little bit long on those now that I'm actually looking at it, hopefully. Yeah, shit. Or cracker. Okay. Need a longer screwdriver. Pretty good bite on it. We've got a couple of little nuts to go on the back side. I don't they might not be needed. Every time I ever do this, I usually regret it, but just in the sake of uh, speeding things up a little bit. Too good to be true. I think I'm gonna leave that for right now because I think another thing that I haven't really thought through completely is the lack of room in there. I don't know if there's actually enough room to get a nut on and spin it down. You might have to have them in place and then have them be there from the get-go. Might be a version two thing. Sounds like a problem for later me.
I don't think this fan or the soldering iron is going to draw nearly enough to warrant it, but I am going to put each one of these on a dedicated terminal just in case down the road I decide to do something It's a little bit heavier, and I think this is, I don't know what each terminal is rated for, but it's only a 200 watt. Hmm. After the fact thoughts, I should have kind of staggered the wire links so that because uh, they're not, uh, it's not ground neutral, ground neutral, ground neutral, it's or, uh, ground power, ground power, ground power. It's, Ground, 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 power, power, power. There we go. So we just talked about this. Pop quiz. Which one to use which? is neutral, not ground. So, let's just, yep. yellow is voltage, 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 voltage. All right, so I am going to want to plug this in, power it up real quick, and hit it with a meter and just make sure nothing happens before we put it together. I know that snap together enclosure, if it goes on, it goes on pretty well, so I don't want to have to immediately try and rip it back off. Got the little light on. DC. Don't ask me who RIK is. I don't know. Losers finders above ceiling, buddy. 24, 24, and 24. Perfecto. Easy peasy.
I'll give it a second just to bleed down. able to get it together last time by sliding this down on top but now that I've got all these wires that's not going to work as easy Just a smidge. really tight on this side. Let's see, I don't know if you can see in there. Right against that screw terminal. So that's just kind of what I'm fighting with right now. The original design was even smaller as far as like space for the wires inside, so I'm glad Glad we stepped it up at least to where it's at now, but I'm afraid we might have to go It's so close. Hmm. You know what I should have done? I should have left these all off, put this on, then thread it back through. It would have been easier to tuck everything inside. as I continue to try and force it. So it's on, it didn't snap together, you can see, do, 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 do. but it's not nearly as good of a fit as when it was just a bare, 
uh, without the wiring in it. Yeah, see this has kind of started to push back out just a smidge now too because of the wiring. So I think it's probably going to be best to probably just add a couple millimeters in length to this. It'll be an easy switch. Everything else seems pretty good though. I mean, it's definitely, it's on there. Just a little bit cramped. Anywho, on to bigger things. Like, does it work? a good start so then real quick I also just want to <laughs> real quick I'm not super worried I probably should be, but I'm not super worried about like true fume extraction. I do though, just want to get something that just kind of blows it not into your face. There's that whole phenomena about how your body makes a little area where the F draft can come and anyways, yeah. This is, this is just supposed to be enough to disturb that. Famous last words. Uh, let's see here. I 
actually going to need. We can actually use it. Phone and a friend. It's like the littlest wire I think has ever been put onto a XT60. What are you doing? Why was the other one so easy and this one's no, so not? Ah. You can keep biting it, but it's gonna happen. I think. Try and get this to be. Oh, here you go. Duh, come on. I think with that big brain. Clip the wires together. Sorry, says. Oh, yeah. Okay. Any black tape.
feel like I don't have any tape. I know I have some tape. Mm. Use this for right now just to keep it from fraying. I should have put a piece of heat shrink on that before I put the connector on. Whoops. All right, services. Oh, yeah, look at that. Didn't envision that being a problem. Huh? Okay, maybe it's not a problem. I'm actually, I've got a little, uh, oh, I guess. There's a little fume fan housing. I should have, uh, let's see here. Oh, I don't even know if I have it saved. I don't think it's on here. Hmm. Never mind. Bort. Anyways, it's a little little stand with housing and funnel. Oops. Pretty good. Pretty good flow there. Pretty good. Definitely enough that if you're gonna sit here and solder something, it'll blow. That's a good option to have. And the switch works. Look at that. All right. So, overall, definitely pretty happy. It works. That's, that wasn't a guarantee, so that's cool. I think we are gonna go back to the drawing board on, on making this just a smidge longer so that everything in there fits a little bit more comfortably. Um, but like I said, the actual locking mechanism works pretty well, and I think it's only going to be better when... the uh, wires aren't so bunched up in there, because like you can, you can kind of tell that the, the side is a real nice fit. The bottom's a little bit sucked in. I think it's actually because... Maybe not. Hard to tell. I don't know. Like, I I was originally thinking maybe it'd just be easier to do something that actually was a sleeve. I call this the power sleeve, and it doesn't actually go over it. But if it were to go over, you could use some of these already threaded mounting holes. But I wanted it to be able to lay on the desk and just be flat, relatively low profile. It is a, there's a little bit of a bulge on the front, but I don't know. I'm happy with it. I think, like I said, we'll we'll extend it, reprint it, and then the only thing we'll have to do is pop this off and switch the. We won't actually have to wire or solder anything. So that'll be a pretty straightforward, simple fix. So yeah, well, that's it. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Hey guys, today we're going to be putting together this power sleeve for this Meanwell power supply, so let's go ahead and jump right into it.